So I was having a bit of trouble trying to figure out what video I was going to make today. I know I was going to do two you're wrong about every, uh, well, one you're wrong about every week, so two in my normal cycle, but I couldn't for the life of me, for some reason, just out of the blue, think of anything <laughs> to do. Uh, and then I was reading the news and it came to me. So today we're going to talk about how you're wrong about death in the SCP universe. Let's get started. I'd say there's three major storylines in the SCP universe or SCPs uh, based around the idea of death. So there's probably, uh, I'm not sure which one would be more famous at this point, but there's O Death, What Happens After, and The End of Death canon. Now, the End of Death canon is a very, very well-developed canon about what happens in the SCP universe if something happens to death, which is not a exactly original idea, but they develop it very well and they do a lot of fun things with it. I say it's not original because uh, the uh, Cancerverse has existed in the Marvel, uh, Marvel's back, <laughs> what's the best way to put it? It's an alternate universe for Marvel for a very long time. Um, where that's another universe where death died, I guess. Death was removed and no longer uh, functions, so the entire universe kind of becomes cancer. But then there's also O-Death and what happens after. O-Death is interesting because... <laughs> it's, another one. it's interesting for a couple of reasons. I, I originally remember pitching Cactus an idea many, many moons ago. Uh, he probably doesn't even remember it, but I pitched him, um, what if you read an airplane when you took off in it you were instantly transported to a world where everything had just died, but you could only see it from the sky. Like, you could just see the effects of it. And everything had literally just died the moment you walked, or <laughs> walked, the moment you flew away. And that was before <laughs> O-Death ever existed. Uh, and then I saw O-Death one day and I was like, huh, well, he did a way better job with my idea than I ever did. But I'm going to bet in the end it probably was just something that stuck in his head and he didn't even remember that I'd pitched it at him a long time ago anyway that's that's neither <laughs> that's just a fun little wiki story uh, yeah uh, <laughs> i have a bad habit of uh coming up with really good ideas and then not writing them and then watching somebody else do spectacularly with them i also did that with an I ikea like idea i showed it to the guy who wrote ikea and he was like wow that is very similar but uh he had written his before he ever saw that i wrote a endless Walmart. It was exactly the same thing. It was an eldritch endless Walmart. Um, but I wrote a draft for it and then I didn't use it. Regardless, death. I get off topic. I'm on a tangent. I'm, on one, I'm having one of those days. Um, so we have O Death, which is an interesting examination of a world where literally death is a thing that you can carry around with you uh, <laughs> and literally kills everybody, everything all at once um which as an example of like when you deal with see death is one of those things that's like primal it's a serious primal fear for most people and what you can do when you're writing fiction of any kind is you can take your primal fear especially horror fiction uh and you can turn them into some sort of story point that's useful for you what we do with stuff like death, especially, is try to make it interesting. And you're like, well, isn't death interesting all on its own? Not really. Death is usually the end of the story. It doesn't have to be, especially in supernatural fiction. But by and large, a death ends someone or something's story. It either it ends the story completely or it ends a character arc because obviously you can't have further character development after you're dead unless you're a vampire. Like I said, supernatural fiction gives you an opportunity to fiddle with that a little bit. But in the SCP universe, death is often used... Which it's weird that they do this because you live in a supernatural universe where death is not necessarily from the final, but... In a lot of cases, when you see like D-Class, D-Class are used a lot to demonstrate death, but in a way to make it seem like it's super scary, right? So your SCP is dangerous. It kills people. Well, look, we sent a D-Class in and now that D-Class is dead. Unfortunately, I think a lot of people miss that it's not super interesting on its own for something to just kill people. 
That's a tip for you writers out there. Just killing folk doesn't make it scary. But we can examine the role of death in fiction, and the, de and the idea of death in a supernatural sense uh, has existed in comic books and television and movies for a very long time. So there's a lot of ground that's already been covered, which is why things like Oh Death is a completely fresh idea, just a world where everything has just died. It's kind of a post-apocalyptic story, except <laughs> there is no, there are no survivors, right? <laughs> or um, we, we haven't talked about it yet, but what happens after is another interesting story of what happens after you die. Uh, and it basically just goes, says that all, every, all existence is suffering even after you die, which is uh, it's a bit of an edgy way to look at it. All existence is suffering, but at least there's a sweet embrace of death. And then I suffer some more. I mean, that's the that's the underlying message of of uh, not of death, but uh, what happens after. See, my issue with what happens after has always been that it seems like it it very ham fistedly tries to uh, demonstrate to the reader what's going on. It's like, in case you didn't notice, in case you didn't see, this is a serious. <laughs> you could describe what happens to this guy after he dies. Well. He, he's, he experiences literally every, uh, every moment in exquisite, agonizing pain. And you're like, okay, well, that's something. And you draw your own conclusions from it. And then the article tells you before the end, and by the way, that's horrifying, which is my least favorite way to tell any audience anything is to just straight out tell them how they should feel. You should feel scared of this. This Keter, death should be declared a Keter anomaly <laughs> and contained at any cost. Ha <laughs> ha Talks like that. No one talks like that. Anyway, I have problems with that article. Um, but you can look at these varieties of articles and how they address death in a supernatural sense in the SCP universe specifically. Bright is another good example of that. You see this a lot. Let's take a character and see what happens to them if they can't die. And Bright is the example for that in the SCP universe, although there, there might be others. I don't know if there are any others that are like major, major characters. But yeah, Dr. Bright is a definitely a good, he's the vampire of the SCP universe. The, uh, the version of it like, hey, let's take this horrible world we live in and put a person in it who can't die. Because you, you look at this horrible world, the uh, SCP-173, if I don't look at it, it's gonna snap my neck. That's scary. Or a 106 is gonna pull me into his pocket dimension and eat me alive. Then you take that universe and you throw in a guy who can't die or uh, essentially can't die. You know, there's a way, or it's, but it's still immortality. And I've played around with immortality a lot. In fact, immortal white, I like to say immortal white guys are kind of my niche on the SCP wiki, which may have something to do with the fact that I fear, uh, not death, but oblivion, the idea of being forgotten after I'm gone more than anything else in the entire world. And also I'm a white guy. But, uh, and I try to write, you write what you know. Uh, but I've written, let's see, I've written multiple uh, immortal guys who uh, and shown how they how they go through the world after becoming immortal so i've got uh no fury which is about a guy who became immortal back in the 1800s or late 1800s and uh did some terrible shit and has to pay for it eventually and i've done uh the anti-pope who is a regenerative pope from i want to say the 1300s roughly so he's, he's an immortal fella as well I did a god. I feel like there's more. Ugh. I'm trying to think. I don't know. I've definitely done at least three. I feel like I've done more than three. <laughs> of course, there's Dr. Sumerian. I mean, I don't have to explain to you how he's immortal, right? Anyway, that's a little tidbit for you uh, lore hounds out there. Who I, I get every once in a while I get people uh, bugging me about, like, stuff for Dr. Samarian. Like, what's going on with Dr. Samarian? And I'm like, well, this is what's going on with Dr. Samarian. Okay. I think the SCP universe is a good, it's, it does a very good job generally of examining death as a point in fiction, right? Because it's always been an issue in fiction. 
how do you deal with a character death in a way that doesn't destroy your story? Death is the highest of possible, well, it's not the highest of possible stakes, but in most stories, it's the highest of possible stakes. There are apocalyptic stakes, especially in the SCP wiki. Uh, and the, the thing with the SCP wiki is it always tries to raise the stakes. And technically, apocalyptic stakes are still talking about death. It's just death on a wide scale. But the, the issue with fiction and death has always been death ends a story or it ends a character. So once you do it, you know, death of Superman kind of thing, if you do it and you go back on it, then it no longer ever has any weight at all. When a character dies in comic books now, you don't think, oh man, so-and-so is dead. Some people do, but you don't think, you shouldn't think, oh, oh, so-and-so is dead. Spider-Man dies. I'm not going to think that Spider-Man is not going to be back in a year. He makes too much money for Marvel. <laughs> Same thing goes for most of the people in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, even. Like when you see a character and you're like, oh, they died? I don't know if they did. Depends on who they are and if, they, if they've got their own franchise or not. Um, so then you, you lose that impact of that death, right? Like, and the same thing goes for Dr. Bright. Like, Dr. Bright's stories aren't about his death. He's not afraid of dying because dying is uh, rote. It's like breathing for him. It's just what he does. And it's the kind of thing like that that lets you unlock kind of a that deep-seated fear that everyone has of oblivion, of death, of, you know, the unknown, what happens after. I think the SCP Wiki's take on death, when it's not being used as a cheap plot point to try and scare readers, is probably one of the better ones in fiction, because it's about consequences, and those consequences have to matter. It can't be like I said, it can't be like Superman. The death, of Super the death and return of Superman is what it should be called. Uh, the Death and Return of Superman cheapened death in comic books forever, even though before that, characters had come back. But at that point, it was just like, nobody dies. You know, you've got uh, TV shows where some character gets killed and they <laughs> show up in the afterlife and then they come back for to the real world and then they just live a normal life again. And then what am I supposed to do? This person just died, went to hell, come back. And then I'm supposed to be like, well... Yeah, he's having love issues today. Like, the scale of those two problems is like, you know, it's what are we dealing with here? I think on the SCP Wiki it does a better job of that because there's a lot of finality to a lot of the characters' deaths and a lot of, a lot, there's a lot of impact to it. But then no canon makes that easier, right? Because you never know if the story you're reading is the final chapter for that character. There could be another version of that character. Same character who didn't die. You're not bringing them back. That character died. That storyline has ended. So you get the impact while still getting to use the characters again because you have an infinity of canons to build them with. Anyway, that's just some thoughts I've had after reading way too much news this week. Thank you very much for watching. If you have suggestions for the next You're Wrong About video, let me know in the comments down below, because next Thursday I'm going to be doing another one. Tuesday, I'm still not sure what I'm going to be doing. I know I'm going to be getting rid of this. This uh, I let this grow out for two weeks uh, when I really shouldn't have. I'm probably going to try and shave tomorrow. This too. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, scroll down, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And then... Head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian like everybody here on the screen already has. And special thank you to Manuel Noltorp and probably a wizard and definitely not a scientist for being $40 backers. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here. And I'll see you all again on Tuesday.